All right, so do we have any shift workers in the audience? A few, good, okay. All right, let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna talk about, um, we're gonna define shift work. I wanna talk about the normal human rhythm, how our body functions through day and night. Uh, I wanna talk about, um, answer the question, what are the health effects of shift work? I wanna talk a little bit about blue light, and we'll talk a little bit about prevention. So what is shift work? Um, so this includes um, any arrangement of, uh, is this working? Daily working hours, is this working? This one. Yeah. Good, okay, there we go. So shift work, any arrangement of the daily working hours other than standard daylight hours. So about eight or 9 a.m. to 5, 6 p.m. would be the regular. So anything beyond that, starting earlier, starting later, Afternoons, midnights would be considered shift work. So that schedule, as the shift worker, seems like there's a group in the back there. Um, you know it, it um, affects your social life. You know, if you're working late, you're working early, you need to sleep. You know, there's events you can't attend. It affects your family life. Um, but we're going to focus on the health effects of shift work today. So just some facts. Um, <clears throat> Shift work is reality for about 25% of the North American working population. Um, but when I was reading that stat, I was wondering, you know, is it more than that? You always hear about people working, um, you know, moonlighting, working more than one job. Are they driving for Uber? Um, you know, are they driving for Uber, you know, on an afternoon shift? Or are they doing it at night to pick up people after the bar, stuff like that? So I was thinking maybe it's actually more than that when they combine two jobs. So industries and services that uh, the workers are shift working, uh, manufacturing, energy production, transportation, healthcare, um, law enforcement, and the military. And some other facts. Uh, so there's been uh, some incidents. Um, all these incidents occurred between midnight and 4 a.m. Um, so in Bhopal, India, there was a big chemical spill. Of, it's an isocyanate gas, some other chemicals. Uh, Thousands of people affected by it, some deaths, uh, Chernobyl um, accident, and then the Exxon Valdez oil spill. These all occurred between midnight and 4 a.m. Coincidence? Maybe. Um, and then so there is, there's the night owl type personalities that you've heard of. These people adapt to uh, other shifts uh, easier than uh, morning larks. So you can see on a little picture there that little morning lark uh, chirping at the night owl there. So when we talk about the normal human rhythm, humans are programmed to be awake during the day and sleep reduces activity levels at night. That sleep re repairs our body, gets us ready for the next day. And so from that, we call what's the circadian rhythm, and that's um, the internal clock. So your internal clock manages your body's functions that revolve around day and night activities. So the circadian rhythm, um, Basically, the word means about a day or around a day. Um, <clears throat> so our sleep-wake cycle is related to the cycle of the sun. Other things that help regulate that cycle are social activities and meal times. Uh, so circadian functions, um, it regulates our sleep when we go to sleep, uh, when we wake up, uh, digestion, secretion of hormones, and our blood, blood pressure. Okay, so leading up to sleep, um, there's glands in our body. Um, they're activated by darkness. Or, so the lack of light um, causes our body to secrete hormones. So I included one example, melatonin, and we'll kind of use that example uh, throughout the presentation. Um, so that signals our body is preparing to sleep. So our, our body cycles are kept in check by, this, uh, by the circadian rhythm and these signal hormones such as melatonin. Okay? So disruption of these symptoms causes health effects. Um, disruption by both internal and external signals, and I'll let you know what those are. But uh, the chart you see in the bottom right there, um, that's the melatonin levels in our bodies, okay? So really low during the day, and as uh, the day goes on, it gets dark out, it starts to rise and it peaks during the night. And then in the morning, it goes back down to the, to the normal level. Okay, so remember that, because that's important. We're gonna talk about that again later. So some of the internal and external factors that are, affect our circadian rhythm. So on the outside of the circle, we have our external factors. So those are things like your, what actual shift schedule you're on. If you're on afternoon, midnights, you're starting really early in morning. 
your job requirements. Uh, those are such things as, um, you know, is there task variation? Um, do you have enough people working there? What are you doing? Is it light? Is it dark? Um, if you're on a rotational schedule, if you're not just stuck on one shift, um, and we'll talk about what is the preferred rotational schedule. And then there's other things, the external factors are what you're putting into your actual body. Uh, you know, smoking affects your sleep, uh, caffeine affects your sleep. And then the psychosocial factors in your workplace, which you just had a whole presentation on. Uh, so we'll get into that. But the internal factors, um, your fitness level, your individual circadian rhythm, whether you're a night owl or morning lark, age, those over 40, uh, they have a hard, harder time adapting to circadian changes. Um, and then your gender, um, men do apparently have an easier time uh, adapting to changes in circadian rhythm. Okay, so now we're gonna get into some of the health effects. Um, so I have this picture up here. Um, so the inner circle is the systems disturbed by the circadian misalignment. Okay, the outer circle are the medical conditions. And then the broad quadrants are the, um, the outer com components there. So I'm gonna go through each quadrant and then we'll, just to give you some more uh, examples and details. So when we talk about heart health, um, working shift work is associated with uh, elevated risk of heart disease and ischemic stroke. Uh, also coronary heart disease, it disrupts your blood pressure and it causes, um, phys can cause physical fatigue, okay? So in our picture there we have, you know, can cause, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but um, inflammation is something that it causes. And then on the outer circle, you have your stroke, cardiovascular disease, and then our physical load, that's where we get our fat fatigue from. Okay. So in the next quadrant, um, we have metabolic health. So this is where finding shift workers have an increased risk of type two by diabetes. Um, so they're thinking this is because um, you have altered meal timings from what you're used to. Uh, when you're tired, you crave food with uh, large carbohydrate content. And you know, the thing is those foods are available 24 hours a day, okay? So they're easy to get and they're convenient, so you're tired, you're gonna go right for them. Your body's craving them anyway. So when we talk about uh, cancer risk, um, so the International Agency for Research on Cancer, um, they classify cancers. So back in 2007, they identified shift work as a probable carcinogen. Um, and they based their findings on long-term night workers who have shown to have a higher risk of breast cancer um, than women who do not work at night, okay? So their study was uh, based on mainly nurses and flight attendants, okay? Uh, so you can see in the picture there, the inner circle, we have that melatonin suppression. Remember, I had that nice graph that peaked during the night. Uh, so if you have suppression in that, it can lead to cancer risk. Okay, so just to give you an idea how that IR classifies their uh, carcinogens, um, there's a different groups there, and then group 2A, probably carcinogenic to human, is where their classification fell for that, for the nurses. So it's pretty high. So I was trying to look for what new, can, what's something new I can bring to this presentation. So I did find a study that was published this year in January 2018. So they did a systematic review of primary cancers in women. So basically this is taking all the scientific literature that's out there already published and reviewing it, putting it all together. So they found in addition to breast cancer, a positive relationship between long-term shift work and digestive system cancer and skin cancer, okay? As far as the group of nurses, um, they found increasing the number of years working shift work increased the risk of breast cancer and increase the risk of also digestive system cancer and lung cancer. Uh, there wasn't a lot of details they could figure out as to why, um, but th those were just the results they found based on the epidemiology that was in the study. Okay, for the guys, um, back in 2015, there was a study published. Um, so they asked the question, does night shift work increase the risk of prostate cancer? So again, this was a systematic review. So they reviewed all the published studies that were already out there, and they did come to the conclusion that night shift work is associated with an increased risk of prostate cancer. 
And so since we're on the theme of uh, mental health today, um, there is a mental health component to working shift work. Um, so if you do work shift work, um, you know, you're tired, you're fatigued. Uh, so they found shift workers have an abnormal or heightened response to stress, okay? This results in difficulty managing your response to stress, the, the rather that compared to someone that did not work shift work, okay? So you have the inability to regulate these emotions. Um, shift work also can uh, limit your social interaction. So if you have problems in your life, you, you know, you may have people you talk to, a friend, and since you don't have that social network, maybe not available because of the shift you're on, you need to sleep, um, then it's just not there for you, okay? And then you also have that work-life interference, you know, with the timing of maybe you can't attend and you have events that you need to attend to your family, so maybe you have a lot of guilt since you're missing uh, time with your family. And to go along with this, uh, fatigue keeps coming up uh, when we talk about shift work. And so here, a lot of pe people experience me uh, mental fatigue from working shift work, along with physical fatigue. So there's a lot of studies out there on um, law enforcement workers, and they are found to have a higher risk of stress-related mood disorders um, compared to people who don't work shift work, and compared to some law enforcement workers who do not work shift work. Okay? And so I did find another study in 2013 from the Medical Journal of Australia, and they identified mood disturbances um, in their study. So, they looked at people working shift work, and see the little picture there, in the bottom right? Um, so those right on the, right the um, circadian misalignment, and then we go to sleep disorders, and then we have which lead to disease, okay? So something that was just published uh, in 2017. So, uh, so you, in the cloud there on the picture, you can see that's a response to stress. Okay, so if we go to that right solid arrow, this is something that's already known. Okay, so stress causes changes in your, basically your normal flora, your normal bacteria in your gut, which causes inflammation, which leads to metabolic disruption. Okay, all that is known. So then when we have that box over there, sleep loss, circadian uh, disruption, they're theorizing that it's a dotted line, so they're, they need more research, right? So they're hypothesizing that sleep and circadian disruption alters the gut microflora, okay? So that's not something that's known yet, something that they're gonna be looking at next. Uh, just a quick note on fatigue, I already mentioned it a few times. Uh, basically, it's a state of being completely exhausted, not just sleepy, but exhausted, okay? Um, so you're gonna have difficulty concentrating, decreased reaction times, and that goes back to those examples I gave in the beginning about those incidents. Um, you know, were those people fatigued? Were they, you know, difficulty concentrating? You know, were they prepared? Could they not react to what was happening at the time? Maybe. Okay, so both safety and productivity are reduced at night. Um, and they're finding that um, safety declines over successive nights. So the more night shifts you work, the, left, the less safe you're going to be, the less um, you're going to be following, you know, safety procedures because you want to take shortcuts because you're fatigued because you're tired. Okay, I'm going to uh, switch gears a little bit. I want to talk about blue light because it does affect our sleep. It affects our circadian rhythm. So blue light comes from a couple sources. One good source is the sun. One other source is our LED tablets, phones, computers, TVs, okay? Um, so sunlight and white light all contain a combination of various wavelengths. So in the picture there, you can see that the sun peaks in that, in that blue light range. And this is important, you'll see on the next slide. But getting that, getting that blue light is important. It, keeps it, it wakes us up, it gets us ready for the day, it improves our mood, okay? But these benefits are only great during the natural daylight. So you can see on the picture here, the blue light for the sun um, peaks in the blue range, right? So when you go down to the next picture, the blue range is right in those device screens, okay? And I'll show you why that's important. So your brain interprets the light from the screens as the sun, okay? So if you're laying in bed late at night, it's gonna cause you not to fall asleep, right? I'm sure everyone's experienced that, maybe. Maybe, okay. <laughs> 
So I'm not just making this up, in 2015, there was a study uh, on the use of light emitting e-readers, okay? So they took, they let people read an e-book and they compared it to people reading a regular printed book, okay? So the people reading the e-book took longer to fall asleep, had reduced evening sleepiness. So they act, remember that melatonin graph I showed you guys in the beginning, how yet it had that peak in the middle of the night? Okay, so they had reduced melatonin levels from looking at that screen, okay? Later timing of their circadian clock and reduced next uh, morning alertness, okay? Okay, so what are the recommendations? Here we go. Avoid looking at bright screens two to three hours before bed. And there is, is apps and filters you can put on the devices um, that filter out that blue light. And just for a comparison there, um, with the filter on, uh, the picture there, it's just a little bit yellow. So it's not as bright. It's not that bright white color. It's a little bit yellow. And after you use it for a while, you don't even notice it. So why is this important? Why do we care? So obviously we have increased use of technology in the workplace. So a lot of places now are giving tablets, phones for, for your use. Um, I mean, even when you go rent a car at you know, Enterprise, they come out with their tablets, okay? Um, technology has made us available 24 seven. You know, people need to respond to emails even late at night so they can be on their, their devices responding. Um, you know, more and more people have flexible working arrangements. Instead of working during the day, maybe you're working a little bit during the day, maybe you're doing some of the work at night, so you are on these screens a lot. Okay, okay so we're gonna get into uh, prevention. Um, so as John mentioned, he talked about hyg occupational hygiene in his presentation, so, um, so we need to apply the hazard control um, in the following order. Usually engineering controls are first, uh, usually ventilation, substitution, isolation, et cetera. Administrative controls are some kind of worker rotation. Um, personal protective equipment is usually respirators, hearing protection, but we're gonna talk about at the worker, what the worker can do for themselves. So we talk about engineering controls. Um, can the work environment at night be improved to improve alertness, right? Is there appropriate lighting or is it dim? If you're already fatigued and it's dim out, you're gonna be even more tired, okay? You're not gonna be, you know, you're not gonna be following procedures, you're gonna be taking shortcuts. Um, is there enough task variation? Um, are you just doing the same thing for your whole shift or are you able to move around and switch, okay? Because that's gonna keep you more alert, the di more different things you can do. Again, is a, is a shift work appropriate? Is it necessary? Maybe a certain activity was done on an off shift um, for certain reasons, and maybe now it doesn't need to. Um, are resources, human or otherwise, right? Is there enough people there for you to get all your breaks in for your rest? Um, uh, so here's where we talk about, um, I mentioned rotating shifts. So the preferred rotation is to work days, afternoons, then midnights, okay? That prepares your body to shift, shift that circadian rhythm forward. Um, as far as how long a shift sh should be, um, there isn't really a lot of consensus on it. Um, there is comparison between the eight and 12 hour. Um, with a longer shift, less fewer consecutive nights, right? Remember I said consecutive shifts in a row, there's more safety concerns, right? So if it's a longer shift, there's less of them. However, there can be additional fatigue from that longer shift. Um, there's also the timing of the shift, early morning, Obviously your sleep is disturbed, um, you know, if it's five or 6 a.m. and then that leads to greater fatigue. Um, one of the things that I've found, um, rapidly rotating shift is preferred, um, switching once or two uh, during the week. Um, a lot of people don't like that though because then if you have a family schedule, um, it's hard to keep, keep things on schedule. Um, but it is found to cause the least disturbance in the circadian rhythm. Uh, and for the workers, if anyone's on permanent night shift, um, circadian adjustment can be achieved. Um, so when we talk about mm -hmm. the worker, let's get my presentation back. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, so as far as sleeping goes, uh, if you're working midnights and then if there's people at home, you need to make sure family and friends, you don't want people calling you, waking up, make sure they're aware of your schedule and that you need to sleep. 
Uh, there is lots of apps out there uh, for shift workers, um, just to get your schedule straight. Um, napping strategies, uh, there's mixed results on taking short naps. Uh, I didn't really find any good information on that other than that mixed results. Uh, so some people can adapt to shifts after about two to three days. Others it takes longer, but generally you can shift your circadian clock about one to two hours per day. So it can take, take some time to shift, but it will. Um, also regular exercise will help you sleep. Um, if you can reduce your stress level, that will help you sleep too. And reduce, don't have any uh, exercise before you plan to sleep. Limit your caffeine intake and educating workers on the health effects of shift work. Uh, so one of the most important things is to set, uh, sleep on a set schedule and establish a routine. Uh, healthy e eating habits are always good for any part of life. Um, I don't know, this woman here looks like she wants a Big Mac for breakfast. However, if she's completely on uh, a midnight shift and maybe her her circadian clock is telling her it's dinner time because it's after work, so maybe it's okay if she gets it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm almost done here, and then you guys get a break. Um, just some other resources for you. Um, Canadian Center for Occupational Health and Safety, they have some good info on rotational shift work. Uh, NIOSH in the States, National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, uh, good info there. And then I just put a link for one of those uh, ca uh, calendars for shift workers. And I just lifted, listed some of the references I use. Some of them you do have to pay for. Um, some of them are free. Um, usually you can read the abstract for free and get the gist of what, their, what the researchers or what their conclusions were. There's quite a few of them. And that's all I have for you. Thank you.